Just outside Lafayette in northeast Indiana rises a well-tended monument dedicated to the fallen soldiers of the Battle of Tippecanoe. At this pastoral site, on November 7, 1811, a territorial militia under the command of a future President of the United States, William Henry Harrison, fought one of the most significant and bloody battles in American frontier history. No battle more decided the fate of Native Americans and U.S. westward expansion. In 1803, President Thomas Jefferson told Harrison that once the Indians were taught to farm, they will perceive how useless to them are their extensive forests and will be willing to pair them off from time to time in exchange for necessaries for their farms and families. To promote this disposition to exchange lands, which they have to spare and we want, we shall push our trading houses and be glad to see the good and influential individuals among them run into debt, because we observe that when these debts get beyond what the individuals can pay, they become willing to lop them off by a secession of lands. By 1810, Harrison bought over 120 million acres from the Indians. Once owned, the federal government sent out survey teams. It was with the surveyor's compass and chain that the Western movement began. By the fall of 1807, the territory covered by the surveyors stretched from the western border of Pennsylvania to the Mississippi River on the western border of Illinois. Three future states, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois, had been surveyed and Americans were crossing the Appalachians in great numbers. They entered the area north of the Ohio River, clearing the land for farms and towns. The families who settled here shared the American vision that would become known 40 years later as Manifest Destiny, and which produced an ever-increasing floor pioneers, pushing the frontier and Indians ever westward. In response to this white encroachment, a Shawnee Indian chief, Tecumseh, attempted to unify his people in defense of their lands. Intelligent, Courageous and humane, he is regarded as one of the greatest native leaders of the pioneer era. In 1806, Tecumseh's brother, called the Prophet, began preaching rejection of white civilization. The brothers founded a community, Prophet's Town, at the confluence of the Wabash and Tippecanoe Rivers. Tecumseh, infuriated by the land secessions brought about by Harrison's maneuvering of the Indians, organized a confederacy of a dozen tribes. He told other tribal leaders, One stick can be easily broken, but a bundle of sticks cannot. Let us halt this invading horde of people and their soldiers. Let us reclaim the land and the way of our ancestors. He advanced the position that land was the common property of all the tribes. Sell our lands, he asked. Why not sell the air, the clouds, and the great sea? When Tecumseh declared the 1809 sale of three million acres in Indiana and Illinois invalid, raids began on outlying settlements. In September 1811, Tecumseh visited Harrison in Vincennes, Kentucky, on a trip south. He tried to assure Harrison that there was nothing to be afraid of from the Indians. But after he left, the governor put out a call for troops to move up the Wabash River to Prophetstown. Harrison wrote to the Secretary of War. Tecumseh is now upon the last round to put a finishing stroke to his work. I hope, however, before his return that a part of the work he considered complete will be demolished and even its foundation be rooted up. On September 26, 1811, Harrison began his march north with a militia of 1,200 men made up of army regulars and volunteers from the Indiana Territory in Kentucky. Forty-two days later, they reached an encampment one half mile west of Prophetstown. On the morning of November 7th, the Prophet began a walk to the top of a formation later known as Prophet's Rock. The night before was Tecumseh gone, he had taken charge of the Indians living in the city. He ordered the warriors to sneak up on the militia camp and kill Harrison and his officers. He told them that, leaderless, the militia would scatter. As the plan began to unfold, the Indian surprise attack was uncovered. 
A bloody, ferocious battle ensued with many deaths and wounded on both sides. Later, Harrison wrote about the battle. The bark was flying from the trees. The Indians had the best powder and bullets, as well as bow and arrow. At the southern end of the battlefield, the Indian took his last stand. Harrison and his officers were not killed, and the troops did not disperse as the prophet had foretold. This caused the Indians to retreat. One day later, Harrison's soldiers burned Prophet's town to the ground. The battle marked the end of the tribal confederacy, and with it any hope of thwarting the white man's inevitable expansion west. In retrospect, it was the Indians' last chance to be a partner in the new nation.